This right here is EK's top of the range enthusiast CPU water block, the Quantum Magnitude. The thin array has been expanded by 50% from previous models. It even has specific flow distribution depending on which CPU you're using it with and it's entirely CNC milled. And this is a $21 CPU water block that I bought from Amazon. That's $210 less than the EK Magnitude. And you can probably see where this is going. How much cooling performance actually is there that separates an enthusiast tier water block from an extreme budget one. Because when you think about liquid cooling performance, the big factors that come to mind are total radiator volume, fan speed, the flow rate of your pump, and of course the airflow of your case. But what about CPU water block design? How much does that actually matter? Well, today we're about to find out. Now this video isn't so much as to steer you in either direction and recommend that you buy either an extreme budget or an extreme enthusiast water block, at least without seeing the results first. That's why I'm also including a more mid-range block in the testing, EK's very popular Velocity water block that goes for around $110. This way you can also make a more practical bias comparison because for most of you liquid cooling your own systems, you're probably looking to spend around that amount for the CPU water block. This way, you can make a comparison against the $230 magnitude and see how much performance is actually separated there, and also against the $20 ultra budget CPU block from Amazon. Speaking of which, let's see exactly what we're working with here. So this is pretty much as bare bones as it gets, but it's probably not as janky as you might think. Surprisingly, for $21, we still get a decently sized 3mm thick copper cold plate, as well as a copper fin array with 32 micro channels at 0.5mm spacing. It is super basic though, there's no jet plate or specific flow channel for the coolant, and that means that you're free to use either of the G1 quarter ports as inlet or outlet. But for over 10 times the cost, here's what that gets you. One of the first things that you'll notice when picking up the EK Magnitude is just how much heavier it is in comparison. That's partly due to the all CNC'd mounting frame, something that I've never seen on any other block. Of course, that won't improve thermal performance, but something that will is that absolutely huge fin array. This block is also completely modular, so you can replace the frame with a different color or even completely replace the cold plate down the line with a fresh one if the current one gets a little bit bogged down. What I'm really interested to see though is how much better the magnitude actually is versus the EK Velocity, a more mainstream option for around half the cost. The fin array isn't as big as the magnitude and the build quality isn't as over engineered, but the thermal difference should be quite interesting. So now let's take a look at the test setup. We're using an open test bench and custom loop along with a VTX pump res combo from EK as well as their 360mm PE radiator. And to really push these water blocks to their limits, we're using Intel's power hungry i9 10900K with all 10 cores overclocked to 5 gigahertz at 1.28 volts on the Asus Z490 Maximus 12 Hero. No variable here changes between the tests other than the CPU water blocks themselves. Everything that can be controlled is, such as fan speed, pump speed, and of course all of the CPU power settings. The thermal paste that we're using is Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut, giving us the most energy transfer from the CPU's heat spreader to the block itself, aside from liquid metal. I've also allowed 20 minutes between the tests with all fans set to 100% to let the coolant in the loop cool down to a baseline for each run. Ambient room temperature of course has been monitored and all of the results you'll see reflect an ambient room temperature of 22.0 degrees C. So here we're running Blender for 25 minutes and let's start off with the cheapo block from Amazon. Surprisingly this is actually able to cool our overclocked 10900K to a safe level, keeping the average in the final 3 minutes to just 77 degrees C. But when we add in the EK magnitude, we can see just how much room there is for improvement, almost 10 degrees C. At that point, you've got noticeable room for a higher CPU overclock for more performance, or maybe a lower fan speed for quieter operation. What's really interesting though is when we add in the EK velocity. At roughly half the price of the magnitude, it's able to offer virtually identical cooling performance. 
Both coolers have the 10900K averaging out to around 67 degrees C with this setup. But what happens when we reduce the pump speed from 4000 RPM to a much slower 2150 RPM and hence we're reducing the flow rate of the coolant through the blocks. Well, thermals seem to increase by around 2 degrees C across the board and the ultra budget CPU block is still handling things like a champ under 80 degrees C. Again, the EK magnitude and velocity are effectively the same, both sitting at around 69 degrees C. Personally, I was expecting the magnitude to be around 3 degrees cooler or so than the velocity, but here we just don't get that improvement. So honestly, I've got to give this little cheapo Amazon block quite a bit of praise because $20 in the context of a custom loop is basically pocket change. And although I don't actually recommend that you go and pair this with a heavily overclocked 10900K for your few thousand dollar uh, custom PC, I think most of us are pretty surprised with what you can get away with from a very cheap and simple design. Our test system had the CPU power cranked all the way up to 250 watts. And for 20 bucks, I was expecting this thing to straight up melt, leak, or at the very least have a really dodgy mount. The sweet spot though is definitely the EK velocity. At $110, it can effectively tie the much more expensive EK magnitude, at least in a real world test setup with as many environmental factors that I can control. And I'm not going to bag too hard on the magnitude, a lot of it's Cost is made up from the level of modularity and customization, and there are users who are after that. In terms of cooling performance though, it is absolutely not worth it. So some pretty interesting results here. And moving forward, I do want to say that I don't plan on testing too many more water blocks uh, down the road. I do think most of the name brand blocks out there will perform about one degree within each other. As we've seen, there is clearly a limit on how good you can actually make a CPU water block and how much that can improve the thermal performance of your custom loop. But there is one more that I will be testing and it's this one from Nuvolo. It's a new model that they're releasing soon, which happens to be the smallest CPU block with DDC pump mounting. So definitely stay tuned for that. Otherwise, if you're interested in getting a custom loop started for your own PC, I will leave some links down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.